Buenos dias and welcome back to another video everybody. I am sitting here with my friend and photographer Julia Barr. Julia, Hi. thanks for joining me today. Of course. Happy I appreciate it. Yeah. So if you see glitter on me, you see glitter in the background. We just finished a photo shoot and today's video is on just that. We are going to talk about shooting glitter photography or shooting a glitter photography session. So the reason I had Julie on today is because you know, if you watch my channel a lot, I don't shoot a lot of portrait photography. I'm not an expert. I wanted to bring in an expert and she does great work. And I was kind of going through Julia's Instagram and I noticed something that really popped to me. All of her stuff is really good. So you need to check her out. Her Instagram is right here. But what I want to talk about today is glitter photography specifically. And so that's what really stood out to me. And uh, this is Cameron right here. She's the star of hi? today's shoot. Want to say hi, Cameron? <laughs> <laughs> I saw this whole series of children about Cameron's age and they were spectacular shots, Julia. Thanks. And I just want to talk from start to finish how you go about getting your clients and then how you go about delivering the product and the final shots to the customer. Actually, most of my clients are my friend's kids. So obviously I'm at the age where I have a lot of friends with young kids. We're all looking generally to get some good quality pictures. Yeah. So I would say 90% of my clients are friends and friends of friends. So um, I was in the sorority in college. It's a lot of sorority sisters' kids. So um, those connections are still holding strong here 20 years later. I think I've even seen some things like on Facebook or you put little ads out like can yes. you talk about those ads a little bit? Because I think they're genius. I, I think yeah. it creates an urgency in, so, in certain cases. Um, I've never paid for any sort of marketing. I just go on Adobe Spark and I take one of their pre-made things. Mm -hmm. um, maybe one day down the road, I'll get serious about branding or um, having something of my own. But for now, I use stuff that's free and I use the platforms, you know, Facebook and Instagram to just advertise, hey, I'm doing this. Um, and I let my friends, um, you know, share the posts. And generally I book within two days. So today we shot in Julia's home studio. Can you talk a little bit about your, your setup? Because I watched it go up live and it didn't take long at all. No, my home studio is actually my dining room. Um, so my husband and I will just move the table out. Um, I chose this spot of my house just because I have some space. Um, and I have behind us, um, or I guess in front of us, are some big windows, so I can get good light. I have tried doing a home studio setup with continuous lighting, and I've tried doing it with, um, you know, flash, off-camera flash, and for the glitter shoot specifically, I like to have natural light. It's what I found works the best. Um, so that's why I chose to set up right here for this particular shoot. I use seamless paper um, because there's no glare, and it's easy to clean up, it's easy to take down. I can order it from Amazon and it shows up on my doorstep. Um, this particular color that you're seeing is called Thunder Gray. I like it because it's dark but not black, so I'm not clipping shadows um, in the photos. And also, the glitter stands out against it. Um, but yeah, simple. Give us your top tips or advice for actually, whether they be settings on the camera or okay. whether the material that you're actually using in the shoot, give the audience a little bit of uh, an idea of, of what, what to look out for when you're shooting glitter photography. So my very first glitter shoot, I used pink felt as my background okay. and actual glitter. Um, and the actual glitter is fine. It doesn't show up very well. It also gets in their eyes. It gets in your camera. Um, it's almost impossible to clean up. It doesn't come off the felt, so then the felt is useless. Oh. Um, okay. So over time, I tried many different things, like the different lighting setups, and I actually found that glitter confetti works better because it floats in the air. Um, the light shines off of it heavily. <laughs> this stuff right yeah. here. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, and so usually I'll have the kids play in the glitter, but then I'll also have my mom or my husband or whoever's, whoever I can grab, um, my clients moms or whatever, mm -hmm. whoever comes to my house. I'll have them stand behind um, the backdrop and also drop glitter down to get that that really cool look. I'll, I'm usually shooting at like 1.8 at the highest. Sometimes I'm even shooting at 1.2, um, which makes focusing difficult because you have glitter flying in front of your camera and you have a fast moving child. Um, so I'm a big fan of back button focusing and a lot of practice. 
Awesome. No, yeah. I, I'd like to talk a little bit more about that. For inexperienced photographers or people that want might want to know why why shoot so shallow depth of field? Why shoot at 1.2 or 1.8? Um, Even as a max for you, what what kind of look does it give you? So it, what it does is, you know, this is the background. I can touch it. So there's not a lot of space between the my subject here and the background. So if I don't want to actually see the glitter, if I want it to look more like sparkly balls of bokeh, um, I just, I need a shallow depth of field. I need to yeah. shoot. Makes a lot of sense. And bokeh is always so nice to look at, it is, right? It is. So nice yeah. to look at. This confetti is easy, pretty easy to clean up. I mean, it just, yeah. it gathers this itself together. This entire setup is orderable. You can order everything on Amazon from the backdrop stand to the backdrop paper to the glitter. There'll be a link in the description below to all the items that Julie is talking about today. Yep. Uh, very cool. Anything else that you want to talk about? You've talked a little bit about the camera. You talked a little bit about the material. Anything else to set the mood in, um, in your so studio? You, you have to embrace the mess. Um, the whole point of the glitter shoot, I was telling Pablo earlier, I'm not a big fan of props. Um, but as you can see, like when Pablo asked her a question earlier, it's hard to get kids comfortable in front of a camera. It's really hard to bring out those like genuine smiles and that glee that you see yeah. in your kids, like yeah. when you're hanging out at home. Yeah. It's hard to capture that in front of the camera, but the glitter brings it out. If you let, if you give a kid glitter and you let them throw it, um, then you're gonna get some of that. So you have to embrace the mess. I will find glitter in my house for weeks to come and I just have to be okay with that. Um, and then we play music. Um, I ask all my clients to send me their kids' favorite songs and I put together a playlist and I have it blasting. Um, I also like clients to overlap each other slightly so that the kid that's coming up is watching the kid in front of them. So they're like, ooh, that looks fun and she's doing it and I wanna do it. If they come into a house that's quiet and I just set them in front of a camera, mm -hmm. they're like, mom! Yes. So I like it to be like a party in here. Loud music, glitter everywhere, kids, flying around and um, and that's just part of the beauty of it, very part of the magic. Cool. Very cool. Do you ever use uh, your kids, like Cameron, to yeah. kind of prime the scene? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She, she's almost always a helper. Yeah. Yeah. Able to play mm -hmm. play together because I, I've noticed all the images are about her age, either a little yeah. bit older or a little younger. Yeah. But I think I've shot, the youngest I've shot is a, as a, like a one-year birthday and then the oldest is probably like 12. Okay. What do you do for editing? Do you have presets that you use? Or what do you do in the editing process? And about what is the, about how long is the turnover for you by the time you finish uh, the photo shoot and you deliver the uh, work to the client? Okay, so for a glitter shoot, um, it's all done at about the same time in the same light. So I'll typically edit, I'll find my favorite image and I'll edit it and I'll spend a lot of time editing it, starting in Lightroom. Um, and then I'll make a preset off of that image and I'll apply it to all the rest. Excellent. Um, and then I'll go through and, you know, crop and fix things and um, load it into Photoshop for some final touches. Um, but in general, I'm only delivering 10 photos because how many glitter photos do you need? Sure. Um, and so maybe a week or two at the most to get my, the photos to my clients. And I deliver them digitally. I use Smug Mug. Okay. So, um, I've, and I've actually been really happy with Smug Mug. Okay. Very reasonable. It, it seems like you have it down. About how many of these shoots have you done already? Um, I only do them once a year because okay. they are so messy. Yeah. Um, and so I just pick a weekend and that's what I do all weekend is I just do glitter shoot, glitter shoot, glitter shoot. Um, and I'll take, I'll take as many as I can fit in when the, the light's still good. So yeah. sometimes 10 a day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes me feel good that my good friend actually opened up shop here for me today because yeah. this isn't typical. She's no. done with these shoots for the year, th this type of shoot. But what are some of the other specialty shoots that you do? Because I noticed a little advertisement just recently, I think, for Christmas yeah. or the holidays. I wasn't trained professionally to be a photographer, so my motto to myself to combat the nerves is just to offer people what I would want. And so to not try and be I like that. anything you know, professional, but just give people what I would want personally. Um, and I started taking pictures of my kids in front of a tree, which is actually a hard thing to do photography wise. Yeah. Um, and so I started practicing with that three years ago and I was looking back this year at how much the, at those photos and they mean so much to me because they changed so much these yes. years. So I was, you know, I was comparing, you know, my son and my daughter by our tree over the years and I was thinking like people, like I think other people would really want these. So yeah, this year I'm doing many sessions where I'm going into people's homes with their tree and their kids and I'm just taking some really good quality photos of okay. their kids in front of their tree. And then hopefully that will be a mini session that people will do year after year. 
And then some of the other photography that you also do, because you also do yeah. go out and, yeah. and, and so shoot Yeah, so the portraits. mini shoots are actually a very small okay. portion of what I do. Most of what I do is family photography. So family connection is what, what drives me. So I know you love your landscapes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and your street photography. I For do. me, it's all about the connection. Like I got a photo just the other night of a mom hugging her daughter and her daughter just buried her like her head and mama's and you could see the wrinkles in her nose like yeah. that's what drives me like I captured that yeah. and that will that will feed me for months. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's going to do it. Thank you so much yeah. for joining me today. Absolutely. Cameron, thanks you. Thank you for being our subject today. Say bye. Ready Say one, bye, two, three. Everybody. Bye. bye. See you next time. <laughs>